Hi everyone, thanks again for joining me on Sealed for Good. Today I'm going to talk about polyurethane membranes, moisture cured polyurethane membranes, and water based systems, and how things go wrong. Now, this might be a controversial topic for some of my friends in New South Wales. We we'll have this discussion frequently, but it comes up and it's been coming up over the last decade, and the issue is that it's not going away. And every day out there, we are seeing situations where Moisture cured polyurethane membranes are used. They've got a field and a market for it, but they're used with water based systems, either on top of a water based system or a water based system being applied over it. And there are issues with it. And I've had contact with many of the, the suppliers of PU membranes out there, manufacturers here in this country, and also those that import them. And the reality is, it's not about the quality of the membrane. Sometimes we do see a difference with our testing. However, the big issue is, is the nature of a PU being solvent based and more importantly the isocyanates that evaporate through them during the curing phase. And the fact is when you read the fine print on any of those solvent based products you couldn't put an acrylic paint on them or a water based paint on them and a membrane that's in a water based nature particularly in wet air applications is the same. And the issue is that you will find that there is incompatibility. Now. Over the years, and I've got some samples here I'm going to show you, but over the years we've had different membranes that we've thought, wow, we've actually got a prime that's going to work on this solvent-based membrane, and you start to see really good adhesion, and it's what we call dry adhesion. I'm going to show you something that came out of our lab where you'll be able to see now, the longer the PU membrane is cured for, you get better adhesion of the water-based system on top of it. There's no doubt about that. However, the big issue, it's wet adhesion. And what happens with wet adhesion is that when you get water that runs near the edge of the water-based membrane or the PU membrane between the integration of the water base to the solvent-based solvent system, you get capillary action with water. And that gets under that film edge and it peels. And you'll see how that does. And this, this is a membrane that's basically been exposed to a wet edge. And I can just peel the top coat of the water-based system like so. And that is a big issue. And the problem is that when you're tiling on it in a wet area, you're going to have a separation over time. Now I speak to a lot of our customers out there that do it and they like the PU membranes because it gives them a nice heavy build film, particularly in the winter months. They tend to go with one heavy coat on the floor, but then they understand they're putting a floating screed or a slip sheet on the, on the, the membrane before they put their screed down to get the adhesion on it, which is fine. But then it's the wall tiling, and when you're using the wall membrane, the direct stick, you can't use PU membranes with direct sticking, and that's the, the issue that's created. And what happens is, you then have a tiling problem, potentially, where you've got tiles that are bonded to the water-based membrane, but that water-based membrane is compromised, or could be compromised, where it joins the PU system. And it's just, it's, there's gotta be a different way and a better way out there. And we are turning this a blind eye to this out in the industry. It's like out of mind, out of sight. And what tends to happen is that we address it once the problems evolve. Now, like I said, there is a way that moisture cured PU membranes can be used on site. However, if they are going to be um, utilized where you are going to have a direct stick tile on top, you are going to need to use something that actually not a, a bond breaker, but something that's actually going to act as an isolator between the PU membrane and the tile bed. Okay, and the water-based membrane is not it. So these situations we're seeing out in the marketplace where you're going with water-based membranes on the walls, if you are wanting to successfully waterproof that area, you need to follow that through right to the floor area. Now, if there's a manufacturer out there that can guarantee they're a water-based system on top of this solvent-based PU. Like I said, I'd like that to be brought to light because we'd like to know about it as well because this is a situation that doesn't come about. We do see the ability to put a water-based system on an MS coating, but MS coatings are not used in Australia for the cost factor compared to the PUs which are at the lower end of the market in terms of cost and become more affordable where they're being used. But the concern for me is that we're getting water-based membranes that are being used on this, as you can see, and that's where they are failing. 
So if you'd like to take this one up with me further or share this around, this is not about being critical of PU membranes. Like I said, PU membranes have got a place in the market. There's no doubt about it. But my issue here is when we are integrating water-based membranes on top of PU membranes, solvent-based PUs. If you'd like to talk about it further, please let me know. This is a discussion point. We can get that out there. But we need to address this because particularly in New South Wales, we see this issue ongoing. And some poor sucker is going to be stuck with a potential failure down the, down the track. And also, if you're the one that's actually done the tiling on it or have built the place, this could be an ugly baby you've inherited. So understand where the limitations lie. Until next time on Silver Good, I'll see you then.